So look, I was just thinking here, out riding for my lunch break from work. And um, sometimes as Christians, it's a struggle for many of us. We want to share the gospel. We just really don't know how to. Um, and so it's hard to even strike up conversation. But as I was riding, I was thinking about this. Um, you usually just hear people just talk about God. It's really easy um, to talk about God. Because people, people could be talking about any God. Um, people worship many different gods. We know there's only one true God. But if we're really going to share the gospel, keep this in mind. Having a conversation about God is good, but talking about Jesus is what's going to set it apart because everybody could be saying the name God and you could think, oh, they're a Christian too. See, they're a Christian, they're a believer. No, Jesus is the founder of the Christian faith. And so you got all of these religions out here and, and all of them have some sort of deity. Um, Jesus sets Christianity apart. Um, and so bring up the conversation and ask the person that you're speaking with. Uh, so who is Jesus to you based on your religion or your faith or whatever it is that you believe? Who is Jesus? And so when people start talking about, oh, he was a great teacher. Uh, he was a good prophet. Oh, he did many miracles. He did many, uh, healings. And all of that. No, Jesus did more than that. Jesus came to die for the sins of the world. And so the Bible is very clear on what one must believe. The apostles taught what one must believe um, to be saved. Because at the end of every man, woman, boy, girl, doesn't matter what color you are, your socioeconomic status, your political status, your football team, it, none of that matters at the end of our lives we all have to give an account for the deeds that we've done the deeds that we've done are going to be judged and as believers as followers of jesus christ it's not our works that save us but as a result of us saying that we believe that jesus died for our sins good works should follow that and so for the life that we live at the end of our lives, we have to stand before a judge. So imagine a courtroom where a criminal who has committed crimes has to go to court for the crimes that they have committed. That judge has to sentence them based on the crime. And there are laws that say what crime fits or what sentencing fits that crime. And based on the Bible, the wages of sin is death. So for all the sins, if you're a person out there and you don't want to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, and you know people say, well, God, can God be good? And he sends people to hell God is not going to invade upon your free will. He gave you that. He creates. So if you're rejecting him, he's not going to impose himself up on your life and go dragging you into heaven when you don't want to be with him. But you're going to need a representative to plead your case, just as a criminal is going to need an attorney or a public defender. So if you're out here and you're choosing not to have someone to stand to represent you, then you're out here and you're on your own. But just like a criminal has to be judged in a court of law and they have to be sentenced for the crimes that they have committed, so you and I must give an account to a great judge at the end of our lives. That's the difference that Jesus makes. And he had to be not just a good teacher, a good evangelist, uh, a good prophet, uh, a good high priest and all of that. No, he had to be the son of God 
who came to take away the sins of the world, how by dying on the cross, by being buried, by resurrecting, and then coming back again. That, my friends, is the gospel. Have a great one.